This week's episode of The Grid is sponsored by Impix. Shoot today, upload tonight, we ship tomorrow. On one software, focused on photography. Peach Pit Press, publishers of technology books, ebooks, and videos for creative people. Epson, exceed your vision. Expo Imaging, rogue flash vendors for speedlight enthusiasts. Intel, the power you need for hardcore creatives. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional photography website. And B&H Photo, the professional source. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Grid. My name is R.C., and I'm here with Mr. Pete Collins. What's going on? How you doing, R.C.? I'm doing all right, doing all right, doing all right. And we got Mr. Brad Moore. What's going on, Brad? What's up? How's it going? I like, I like, this is like my what's up. Oh, yeah. Mm. Ow. Ow. Knock it off. <laughs> anyway, so, and welcome to all of you guys for coming in. Uh, if you haven't really noticed, Scott and Matt aren't here. So, uh, we're pulling uh, triple duty. Well, we're hanging out here, so I can't believe that I actually said duty without Pete saying something. <laughs> no, I'm typing knew, that into the chat. I knew you were going to oh, say that. Man. I knew you were going to say that. So, uh, guys, Off to a good start. If you're following along, make sure that you're taking a look at some stuff over on the chat. So if you're at kellytv.com slash the grid, there's a chat bar over on the right-hand side. I'd love to be able to see you guys come in there and share a little bit of inspiration because I think that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the entire concept of a visual library and how to be able to use the masters of photography kind of in the past, you know, people to kind of gear you where you should be going going forward. So it's a great conversation. We'd love to be able to have who the people that you're following. And I'd love to be able to see that in the chat. But before we do that, I did want to mention a couple of different things. We're here because of Kelby Training. And make sure that you go to kelbytraining.com. This is where you could find some of the world's best photographers teaching you everything that you need to know in photography. So right now you've got free motion photography for Van Dorhoff for free. Anything that you want to do, Photoshop, Lightroom, it, photography, everything. It's all here. It's all one-to-one -one roof. I have classes there. Pete's got classes there. This is the place for you to go. Now, what I want you to do while you're there is I want you to go over to the live training section because in the live training section, you'll see that there's areas where we're going to be on tour. Like I'm on tour on November 1st. I'm going to be over in Phoenix. If you want to see all of the dates, just go to all of the dates here and you'll see that there's Chicago, Washington, Boston, Orlando. There's tons of different dates that are here. So take a look, find your city. We're going to be stopping by there. I'm going to be in Phoenix, Arizona on November 1st, teaching the Adobe Photoshop for Photographers seminar tour there. Now, tomorrow, you're probably watching this today. Well, it's, <laughs> it's Wednesday. You're it's definitely Wednesday. watching it today, well, wherever you're watching you are, it today, yeah. unless so you Wednesday, figured out time travel. Which? <laughs> What's going to happen is this. If you're watching this on Thursday, make sure if you're in New York to stop by Photo Plus. Scott is actually doing a couple of different things there on the Photo Plus site. So if you haven't seen it already, go take a look at scottkelby.com. He's got his entire speaking schedule there. Right, and he's talking about all, he's doing a couple of different things. Yeah, he's actually on a panel tonight talking about the future of photography. Yeah, I was pretty excited yeah. about him to do that because he's got some opinions on it. I think it's kind of neat. And then down here, he's doing a couple of different talks, and this is the part that I think is interesting. Tons of different people here. Clay Blackmore, you've got Stephen Johnson, Greg Heisler. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm going to that one. <laughs> I'm going to actually sit and go to that one. That's the one thing that I'm looking forward to there. So. Make sure that you stop over at scottkelby.com slash blog. Take a look at what he has there. Uh, that's going to give you an idea. One of that, you can catch him if you're in the city and any other cities under the Kelby Training Live Tour. Now, let's go ahead and take a quick break, right? We'll do it very, very quickly because I do want to kind of give you time to put in some inspiration on the chat. What we're talking about is this, and this, I got to give full credit to Pete on this. We were talking a little bit about photography and we we're talking about how sometimes you'll get to a part where you kind of know the commands, you know what you can do with the dials, you know what you can do with most of that stuff, but you'll find yourself in kind of a photographic rut and you won't necessarily know where to go past that. And it probably isn't immediately apparent to you, but you really kind of need to look back in order to be able to look forward. And we'll explain a little bit about that when we come back from a break here on The Grid. See you guys in a bit. Whoa. 
Welcome everybody, RC here. Welcome to Exposing HDR here on Kelby Training. Now, the best place for you to do all of this stuff is gonna be in this room. He's back! Go away! Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! Welcome back, everybody. RC here on the grid. I'm joined by Brad Moore and Mr. Pete Collins, one of the Photoshop guys. Now, let's get and just jump right into it. We're talking about, oh, I can't actually jump right into it. I'm, I'm staring right at the thing. People have been asking on the chat, what are we giving away for giveaways and what are we doing for a Peach Pit ebook deal? Giveaway. What are we giving away? We're giving away the Sun Sniper. So let's take a quick shot of that, right? the Sun Sniper, tilt it down so that people can actually see it. There you go. So that is a camera strap. You can put the camera strap over your shoulder, right? Really, really nice to be able to kind of quickly draw. You use, at one point, I think you've tried that, right? Mm -hmm. You've tried the yeah. Sun Sniper? Yeah. Pretty good? Sure. Enjoy it. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I tried it. It's again. like, it's right. sure, 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 sure. It's a great strap. It really is. A single strap that you can quick release up and down. Yeah, I really I like, like it. it. Yep. Now, what else do you have there for giving away? Well, we have Joe McNally's book, The Moment It Clicks. I think I got to go over here and look. I'll look at the camera this time. Yes. Awesome book by our great friend Joe McNally. Brad, you might have a little experience with Joe. I, I was with him whenever he was working on that book. That, that book took a good chunk of my life. <laughs> and then we have Exposed <laughs> it it, by Michael Clark, another great book that uh, can be yours, and we'll talk about how to get those in a little bit. You know, the funny part about The Moment It Clicks is that's one of the first books that my wife, Jen, worked on Yeah. in the process of it. So Jen's, so my wife's on it, working on that book, and then in the next book, she's actually in it, in book. which I think is really weird, but it's really cool. But anyway, uh, let's talk about this entire thing. Bef I bef actually, let's talk about the Peach Pit book deal. Yes. Let me get that out of the way because they're pointing to it. They're like, look, it's right there. All right, it's a Peach Pit e deal. It's a limited time offer for Kelby TV viewers. It's 40% off of the Peach Pit ebook. It's Adobe Photoshop uh, Lightroom 5 Classroom in a book by the Adobe Creative Team. So if you want to learn how to be able to work with Adobe Lightroom 5. If you want to learn kind of like a certification path on how to be able to do that, that's the place for you to go. Go to peachbit.com slash kelbytv, enter in the code kelbytv, and you can have this book for 40% off. Thank you so much to Peachbit for that offer. Now, now let's get into it. All right, the concept of the visual library. Again, all credit goes to Pete. Pete, walk us through kind of where you came up with what you were talking about here. Because that was a really nice concept. Yeah, well, I've done, um, like, I've done some things. I've gone in and done some uh, tours with WPPI and other places, and I've done um, portfolio critiques, and different people have come up and said, hey, let me show you my stuff. And they're really proud of the stuff they've got to show you, and, and they're excited about it. So I'm always like, man, this is going to be great. And a lot of times you start looking through them, and you go, okay, this is okay. But then I started to ask myself the question, why are they so excited about these shots if they're just okay? And I started thinking, each one of us has a certain visual library or a visual history of the images that we have in our shots. <laughs> in our minds, as Brad's telling me, look at the camera, not look over here. We have a certain amount of visual stockpile in there that we can draw from to know whether or not this is a good image or a bad image. We kind of are detailing, all right, how does this go? And it started to make me think that a lot of folks these days kind of have this average run-of-the-mill <coughs> visual library. We're bombarded with so many images, we've gotten used to being okay with our images. And there's been a really, a, just go out there and do it and make, <coughs> make things happen and knock it out. And people get really excited, look at my picture. And they don't necessarily have that deep history of what the people before them have done. Start talking about the photographic masters of the past or even the artistic masters of the past to bring some of that library of what's come before to influence and help decide whether this image has merit or not. Right. And it's the, the analogy that I had made when we were talking about it was, it's like, well, how important do you think is? Because what happens, I think, sometimes is when people start thinking about this stuff, a lot of the times people are like, oh, boring. It's like, it sucks. Oh, we're talking about a bunch of dead people. Um, and yeah, you are, but you'll find that uh, the best analogy that I can make with this is 
talking about the concept of spam and eggs. Right, and spam eggs and a muffin. I love how you always come out <laughs> left field with these things. <laughs> I said it's like, it's like the show when we were talking about websites. You're like, it's like porn. I'm like, what? <laughs> you, you, have, you have great analogy. But it makes sense. So you said green eggs and spam. Green eggs and spam. Okay. No. So, so it, it's basically like spam eggs and a muffin. So imagine if you were a imagine if you were a chef, and all you did was just kind of work with the entire. Spam and eggs. And your entire experience was just spam, eggs, spam, eggs, spam, eggs, a muffin. Your, your entire culinary experience is, is focused on these three things. And if you know nothing else, there's only really so much you can kind of do in that one space. So now imagine if all of a sudden, in the middle of all of that stuff, somebody turns around and goes, have you ever heard of something called cumin? And they handed you cumin. That's a or, spice, by the way. Or if they turn around and they said, have you, have you ever researched anything like saffron? And they handed you saffron. You or they would go, hey, listen, here's this one dish that was made with saffron. And now all of a sudden you get these two spices and you're like, wow, this is kind of neat. If, you, if I could use this saffron thing and I could mix it with this spam and the moment that that happens, all of a sudden it's like... You pop out of that box or wherever you are because now you're adding it. Doesn't matter whether or not it's good, or it's bad, or it's indifferent, it's sweet, it's salty. Doesn't matter. It's different from what you have because your experience has just been broadened by something that you didn't have. And I think that what happens is a lot of the times when people, art students that do art, do art history, right? And they don't do art history because they're trying to, you know, tip their hat. And a lot of the times people, Scott and Matt have had some of those discussions here where they're like, you know, what, how relevant are these old masters? I'm like, it's very relevant. If you take a look at it from this standpoint, a lot of the times you learn this all history so that you have this vault of experience that you can work from. And then as you're working through that, you can turn around and go, all right, well, what if I took a little bit of this? Or what if I took a little bit of this section? Or what if I took the essence of this one idea and I tried to combine it with my work? You know, and, and it serves as a good point for you to kind of aim towards when you need to be able to kind of take your photography over to the next level. Well, it, the, you know, when we sit around and talk about these things, we all try to come up with the best illustration and go, oh, no, I've got the illustration to show the point. Because we, we want you to get the idea that this is important, not so that we can prove a great point, but so that you understand how you should be a student of building your visual library to help inform your photography and your art. It would be like someone who was raised out in the middle of Kansas, little small town, and they were great there. But then they walked around and said, this place is awesome. And then you transported them to New York City. Think about what their world would be opened up to when they walked into New York City. They mm -hmm. didn't have any idea of how big a building could be, how crazy it was, until they went to New York City. And a lot of ways, we as artists think, I'm just going to blaze a trail on my own. I just need myself and my creativity. And the truth is, we build creativity off of what we've experienced and what we've seen. Mm -hmm. And the whole goal is, if you want to be a better photographer, you need to build a better visual library. You need to go visit and explore the New York City of your life. If you're used to being here, maybe you need to go check out something over here to help inform and, and broaden your horizons so that your photography shows that. All right. Now, hey, listen, just on a quick housekeeping note, if you see while somebody's talking, if we're sitting there, we're just kind of scanning down or looking down and meditating, thinking about this stuff, we're actually just trying to pull triple duty here. Normally, Scott and Matt are sitting here talking, and they're, they're usually not using a computer, but we'll have three computers kind of sitting in the front and monitoring chats and monitoring anything, in, any kind of social conversation. So we're trying to follow anything that you guys are working on on that chat, and we're trying to see if there's anything that you guys want to show or anything you want to talk about, so we want to make sure that we don't leave you guys out of the conversation right. when we're doing this. But it, it, the visual library, I think, is absolutely important. And what it does is it, act, it could actually temper you and it could actually help you become better, right? Because I think that sometimes you can kind of get stuck in yourself when you're working on stuff. Here's a perfect example. Let me explain, I'll explain to you. So one of the people that I think that's really, that's one of my favorite people is uh, a guy named Jean Millet. And I think he's one of your inspirations mm -hmm. as sure. well. So Jean Millet, and we'll go ahead and we'll put, we'll put the links on the site as well. This is a picture that I had done uh, several years ago, right? So I'll just go ahead and I'll just show it there. Now it's kind of hard to see it, 
right? And yeah, that didn't help much at all. <laughs> but basically, this, uh, yeah, I probably, I'm not gonna try to do it, because if not, I'll just, I'll kill it. But not that one, this one. So this shot that I had here was a shot that I did of a person. Basically, this guy was named uh, Rob the Hurricane Peacock, and basically he has this trick shot that he banks a ball all the way to the corner. So the ball goes from here all the way across, jumps over, Oh, wow, it's going to full screen it now. <laughs> it's, it, so it'll go ahead and it'll bank. Here, let's just pause it. Right? So it banks, it jumps over, and it lands, and it hits that corner ball in the pocket, and it lands it. And I was commissioned to do this. A, a friend of mine had said, you know, I want to do this shot. This guy wants us to do this shot. He's like, how cool would it be to turn around and actually do this shot? And thanks. <laughs> How cool would it be to do this shot? We could do it in Photoshop. We'll capture all the stuff in Photoshop. We'll take the 35 layers and we'll put them together. And I would just leave it on the shot. Don't, don't worry about me. And they were like, we'll put it together in Photoshop and we'll take care of it. And I'm like, you know, the people that I'm going to be hanging with aren't really going to be impressed in whether or not you can actually do this shot in, you know, 30 shots that you layer in Photoshop. But can you do it in one? So this is one shot, one frame, no Photoshop, and it used like eight lights Right there's a whole bunch of different things that are happening here. Like this has like an inverted Gary Fong light sphere right here. There's one light here. How is this stroboscoping with these lights on and not burning the felt? There's a light behind them. There's a light in the front. There's a light right here. So you're saying it's a complicated setup? Yeah, it's a very complicated setup. It's a very very complicated. It took it took six and a half hours to set up to do it. And I talked to McNally about it, and I was just like, listen, I'm gonna tell you about this, but I can't, I don't want you to answer or tell me anything about it. And we explained it, and it was like technically great. I worked on all of this stuff, and I got so overly involved with my the technical eggs side of it. and spam and the technical side of it. I got so overly involved in the technical. It, this thing had like a two second drag. It had a stand with a snoot faking a rear curtain sink so that a second camera would fire aimlessly. It didn't even fire on him so that it created a rear curtain sink to get the guy in, in focus and crazy. No Photoshop. I got it all done and I'm like, this is perfect. And I went and I showed it to Dave Hobby, the strobist. And he came back and he was like, this shot is like a tech, it, it's like, he's like, this is a technically perfect shot, desperately trying to find a home. <laughs> and it was like a punch in the gut. Yep. And I was like, I was so overly obsessed with the spam and the eggs and putting all of that stuff together and working on it. And I was like, what is he, like, it, I was hurt. It, it, it was just something that I was like, I can't believe that I just spent so much time doing this. And it didn't really work. Because you put so much effort into it, so mm -hmm. much of your life, your thoughts, like all the planning, you thought, okay, I can't put this much work into something and it not turn out well. Right. And and, and, and that's the part where it's like, what's missing? You're, you're, it's, a, it's technically, it's exactly what I wanted to happen. Would you say that was kind of the culmination or epitome of your skills and where you thought you could go with your photography endeavor right then? I mastered the boat. Right. You said, this is the best that I can hand you. Here it is. And what do you think? And you expected him to go, this is phenomenal. Right. And it sucks. What's the problem? It's Looking not. at it now. Well, it, for me, he was right. It was like, it was a technically great shot. And he was just like, you know, it's finding a home. And I went back and I was taking a look at the, the people that were doing stroboscopic or that were doing long shutter or any kind of line stuff. And it made me go back and think of Jean Mali. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite pictures of Jean Mali was the picture that he did of Picasso. So Jean Mali's a photographer. And this is a picture that he did of Picasso. So, same shot. Well, it, it's not the same shot. It's a <laughs> shot of light moving around in one frame. And the intention and, and, and the face and the mood and, and, and all of that kind of stuff where this is him painting, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's a bull. Mm -hmm. It's a it's and, centaur yeah, from one of his paintings. And... I, I'm sitting there and I'm watching this and I'm like, this feels, when I go back and take a look at it, I'm like, ah, I like it, it's great, but it doesn't seem to have the same kind of feeling that you have when you look at this. The way he's interacting with the camera, the way it feels very finished as he gets down to the bottom because he's doing that kind of stuff. And 
I was thinking about some of this stuff, but I wasn't thinking about it enough to be able to, to, to accent it. So it actually took a moment where I was like, really heard about it, but it actually put me back on track. And I was just yeah. like, you know what? The next time that I do this, it's going to be even more badass. It's going to be more, I, I got it. I know exactly what I'm looking for. And that, that turned out to be probably one of the best things that happened for me in that picture. I still like the picture, but now I'm like, I know what I'm looking for to make it even better. And well, that's, that's what we want. Like on the blind critique shows a lot of the times whenever people send in pictures, they're very proud of these pictures and they, they want feedback, but they're kind of hoping that it's gonna be positive feedback. And it's a technically perfect picture, but there's no soul. There's mm -hmm. no like, there's no meat to it. So as, as, as many technically perfect pictures are out there, like what does it say about you? Like, it, does it, does the picture move you? Does it does it make you feel something? Well, and I would say that moment right there was a gatepost moment for you. Mm -hmm. I use that as an example. He thought it was going to be praise, and he had reached uh, the pinnacle of his photographic arena. And somebody came in and said, "Oh no, you've just been hanging out in the forecourt area. Let me open this gate and it usher you into a bigger, brand new world." And if we go back to the visual library, it's sort of like, okay, you read the first book. Now let's open up the rest of the library for you to start growing and going beyond that. <laughs> you thought you had reached it, and he just blew your doors wide open and said, now, now go farther. Yeah, and see, and that's the thing. I was just like, I'm reading some of the comments that have actually come in here. <laughs> Gate post. Gate post. <laughs> Gate post. So anyway, so somebody, uh, Michael Lloyd has said, convert it to black and white, RC. No, no, it's not just that. Um, but it's it's one of the let's see what else I said. You could photograph Picasso two p.m. with no clouds and it would still be good. I think it's more than just the fact that it was Picasso. I, I don't. The intention I think was there. I mean, it's nice that it was Picasso, and obviously it was great that 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 it's that one moment. But I think it's a little bit more than that. Um, I point this out to point out a couple of different things, right? So we've talked about the entire concept of the visual history and why it's important and all that kind of stuff. But I also pointed out to be able to show that. I didn't want to start this, and I think that when you were talking about this, you were talking about pictures and people's pictures, and the pictures are just not there, and they're not at the next level. I didn't want you guys to sit there and take a look at this and be like, well, he's just saying that our pictures suck, or, or that, that, that my picture isn't. I was so happy about my picture. What do you mean my picture isn't at that one spot? I wanted to point it out that this is a problem that everybody has at every level. You know, this is something that I, I struggle with all the time. I think I can shoot okay. I think I'm a pretty good shooter. I can hold my own. And I go out there and I shoot with all these people and I get overly involved in the process and I get overly involved in the technical side of it and I get my butt kicked consistently about this kind of stuff. And I get overly obsessed about the technical side of things and I lose sight of all of it. I'll give you guys another analogy. We're, we're talking about analogies. The analogy of the boat. I always, I always talk about photography as kind of like being a boat on a lake going somewhere. And what happens when you first start photography, it's kind of like you're jumping into a boat. right? You look at the boat and you're like, oh, you got to go somewhere. I'm going to introduce you to the boat. This is the boat. It's your camera. And you jump on the boat and then you turn around and you go, all right, well, how does this boat work? It's like, oh, well, you need oars, right? So one oar is kind of like your shutter speed. The other oar is your aperture. And you got to put on your life jacket, which is your ISO. And the first half of your photography life, you spend it learning the operating procedure of how to work the boat how to row this side, how to row this side, how to be able to make sure that water doesn't get in the boat. And one of the things that I think that we do phenomenally well at Kelby Training is to be able to teach you that kind of stuff. We'll teach you how to be able to get on the boat, how to operate the boat. If you do not know how to do it, you will have that cold. That is one side of what we do at Kelby Training. But once you learn that, you got to kind of forget about the fact that you're on the boat. That the process or the mechanics of that have to become second nature. It have to be something that sit in the background and you have to realize that you got on the boat to go somewhere. Where are you going? What are you pointing at? What island are you shooting for? And I think that what happens, and clearly happened to me here, where I over obsessed so much about the technical part of the boat that I never really aimed it anywhere. So it was perfect, and it just sat right there. 
So when we're talking to you about this entire visual story, we're talking about things that happen to everybody. It happens all over the place. It happens to the pros, it happens to the basic people. It happens all over the place. But I think that if you have a good idea of where you're going and what kinds of things you can sail at, I think that that kind of stuff gets a little bit better. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> no, there was uh, a comment I just saw from Johan. He says, I think I'm pretty okay, but I'm still not there. Then I see pictures from Frank Dorhoff, Joe McNally, or RC and want to throw away my gear. How do I avoid that? They're my inspiration, but it really hurts. I think he's saying like seeing that work versus mine. And you just got to know that they, they don't wake up and go, I got this. They wake, they wake up and they're on the way to the shoot and they go and they're still working and working on things through their head. And until they see that product on the back of their camera, on their computer and know, OK, this is happening the way I want it to. Even then, they're not done stressing out, but they, they're a little better about it. So like at no level do you reach a certain point where you're like, OK, I got nothing to worry about. Everything's going to be fine. You're always stressing out about that stuff, like on the way to the shoot and when you're on set trying to work through things. Until until you see that that final image, you're you're still stressing, right? I mean, how how often are you on your way to a shoot, and you and you're not stressed? Hmm. Here, look, there's a really really big comment that came in here by me, and they wrote it, and I'm sure that they probably just wanted to vent, but I figured I'd read it. I don't even know what they're what they're saying about it. Why do we discuss these grades, RC, or your experiences? Not even one percent of us have the opportunity you have. Most of us will never get to their level. Question mark. Photography is a commodity. These photographers, McNally, etc., did not start photographing two weeks ago. I think you guys need to join the times that most of us live in, where we don't get to travel anywhere, where we live in small towns with little valuable clients, etc., or little time to photograph. Who are you directing this at? Question mark. Plus, sometimes it's quite good to take a break. We don't have to photograph nonstop. Cameras have shutter counts. RC, most people don't pay attention to any details. They point and show with whatever they record that image. Then they click to share and annoy their 3,000 Facebook friends. The end. Me? You sound like a very, very bitter person. A little bit. A little bit. Here's your problem, me. You're constantly complaining about everybody else's problems, but not taking into account any of your own. Fact of the matter is, if you live inside of a small town, I can give you a perfect example of a person who lived in a really, really small town who photographed homeless people for a living. His name is Joey Lawrence. He was 18 years old, and he walked around outside of Toronto shooting homeless people. Had nothing else to be able to photographing. do. Photographing. With the camera. camera. Photographing with a camera, homeless people. In the middle of that, he, a couple of years later, shot the cover of Twilight. You make it sound, me, you make it sound like the people that sit on this side of it have everything handed to them and worked with this. Guess what? If we were to step outside, we couldn't get arrested for any of the photographic opportunities that are out there. Everybody hustles to be able to get most of those shots, but you got to kind of be able to know which direction you're going to. At the rate that you spend most of that time, at the rate that you spend complaining about everything else, I, I can't see you necessarily really focusing on a actually doing anything productive. It sounds like you've already given up. I, I would probably reconsider that. Well, and, and here's the thing. Uh, this is intended to inspire and give some people thoughts. It's really up to you. Where do you want to go? What level do you want to be at? Some people really like to be just a happy-go-lucky photographer that does it on the side and is like, great. I, I wish the best for them. There's some people that watch this and want to get better and they want to get better and maybe make a living. And I'm looking over here, Brad, thank you. And, and they're going to want to take this and go, Oh, how can I do that? Let's, let's work on this. And they're going to try to craft their skill and they're excited to grow and learn. So if this isn't for you, that's fine. Check out. We want to inspire people to go out there. If they're hungry, they're going to go out there and do it. And we're going to give them some ways to do it. Uh, we're not trying to be elitist and say, Hey, we've got it all figured out. Yep. All right. Hey, actually, we just finished getting the sign for a break. Uh, let's take a quick break. When we go back, we'll talk about. So we'll talk. We've talked a little bit about why it's important. We've talked a little bit about why it's important for you to be able to find kind of the direction that you want. It doesn't help you if we don't necessarily tell you where to go get it. Right. What kinds of things you think you should find. We think you should find inspiring. Let's go ahead and do that when we come back from the break.
Welcome back, everybody, to The Grid. RC here with Brad Moore and Mr. Pete Collins talking about a visual library. What kinds of things should you look at when you're necessary, when you're trying to take your images over to the next level? Before we start, I, di I did want to say, because I did mention uh, Joey L as a photographer. And when I say Toronto, he's not, Toronto's not a little tiny city. We're talking about Lindsay, Ontario. So it's in that area. So much smaller than Toronto, me, before you get even more bitter. Just oh wanted to point that out. I'm calling him out. I was just like, he's like, why should we shoot? Why should we bother? And I'm like, why are you watching? Well, I thought about during, <laughs> I thought about during the break is I think about uh, we, we talked about different photographers that had small opportunities that made big deals out of it. The lady that does her squirrel photography, she builds sets on her back porch for the squirrels to come in. Or you think of bent objects or other things like that. The guy that does the miniature photography, that it doesn't matter where he is, his creativity is there with them, and that's what makes him a big deal. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. Now, uh, hey, so, so RC, who's this segment sponsored by? <laughs> this segment <laughs> is sponsored by Intel. Uh, thank you so much, Intel. Intel is a great sponsor. Thank you very much, dude. Good <laughs> job, good job. And you know what? It's actually very topical. One of the one of the reasons that I was excited about is if you haven't taken a look at the Apple website, right? So if you go to the Apple website right here, they just announced these brand new Macs, right? So you look at the MacBook Pro with Retina display. These new Macs that they have here, let's just go ahead and buy now, shop online. Uh, all right, let's scroll down here. These little jobbies, the 15 inch retina displays. Glad you prepped for this. Right, I, I wasn't gonna talk about the MacBook Pro, but it was just something that, like these right here, these retina display MacBook Pros, they're all built with brand new Intel processors, the Haswell processors. These processors help, and did this entire thing with Intel, because Intel was here and they were talking, and basically you get this incredibly large battery life with all of the horsepower of a great computer. So. That's something that you might want to take a look at. If you're looking at a new MacBook, that's really, really good. Or if you're on a PC, a lot of PCs are being built with Haswell processors. They really, really do make a difference. Like this PC, right? Good stuff. But anyway, thank you very much, Intel, for sponsoring the show. Now, Brad. Yes. We've talked about inspiration. Yes. We've talked about the importance of having a library. Indeed we have. Okay. Now, I thought it was really, I, you thought your story was interesting in... Yeah. Not just finding libraries, but you all, you came at it from a standpoint of if you want to get better, attaching yourself to better people. Talk, right. talk to us a little bit about that. So, the the example I always go back to whenever people are saying, you know, well, how do I how do I get better at photography? And basically, it's you know, you kind of immerse yourself in better photography. You look at it. You you look at you find pictures that you like that are amazing, and you go, what do I like about these? So. And the, the easy example that, that I always go back to is whenever I was in college, that was when I started doing photography. And whenever I was getting into it, the people that I was working with that had been doing photography a year longer than me, I looked up to them and wanted to aspire to, to their level. And they're good photographers. And me, as I'm learning, I'm looking at them and going, oh, that's cool what they're doing there. That's, that's pretty awesome. So I'm trying to do more of that stuff. And then I graduated and a few weeks later went to work for Joe McNally. And within, you know, a few months of working with him, I could see my photography level increasing quite a bit more simply because I was constantly looking at his work, working on it, being there whenever he's creating it and seeing how he goes about doing everything that he does. And also in the process being surrounded by his peers who are also at the top, top of the game and just, just whenever you're immersed in stuff like that, I'm not saying that you have to go work for Joe McNally to be able to improve your photography. It doesn't hurt. But just being able to surround yourself and immerse yourself in that level of photography. So don't, like, if you, if you want to be the top family portrait photographer in your town, look at other top family portrait photographers and aspire to be that level. If you want to be the best portrait photographer in the world, editorial celebrity, Go find the best editorial celebrity photographers in the world and immerse yourself in their work. Mm -hmm. Then, as you as you see that and you kind of go, okay, this is what I like about this one. This is what I like about that one. You start to build your library. So you're you're kind of plucking things and putting in your head. You you're memorizing these images. And I know even Scott, there was somebody in the chat that talked about this. Even Scott will, whenever he's on a shoot, before he goes to a shoot, he he will go online and find pictures that he likes. 
and goes, okay, well, we're not going to recreate this picture exactly, but I like this bag that they had, or I like that they put a colored gel on the background, or something like that. He'll just find certain little pieces of pictures that he likes, keep them in a folder on his computer, and then whenever we're shooting, he'll go through an idea, and then whenever he works through it, he'll go, okay, well, I'm, I want to do something else, but I'm not sure what I want to do. He'll open that folder of images, go through and go, oh, yeah, that, that was the one. And then we'll do a new setup and create something different. Oh, look, me Me's is back. Me is oh, back. Yeah, yeah. Brad, you're talking as if we can just casually call McNally and ask him to let us work for him. Did, yeah, did you right. not hear me say uh, you don't have to go You work guys for speak McNally? from an elevated position, and it's not fair really to assume people have these opportunities. Me, it's do, do, just not. It, you know what it is, me? It's just you. You don't have these opportunities because you're a bitter, bitter man. Do we want to keep feeding the troll? Here's the, well, yeah, let's just kick him out. You, but hey, you, no, no, but wait. The you, reason the Heisler. you talk about Greg Heisler. But here's the thing. But here's the thing. What, what he doesn't end up, because Heisler does have a great story about that, but it's in the, it has nothing to do with McNally. It has nothing to do with the point is the point with is to go out and study and you can study on the internet without yeah. talking to yeah. a single person. That's what you got to get. Forget about so calling talking McNally. to people may improve your social skills. It would improve his social skills. It would. Well, and here's the thing. I'm going to use uh yeah, talk to us about that. Talk yeah, about, talk I'll give, about you, the Heisler. give you my thing right here. Well, okay. no, I was going to say, Heisler, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Heisler when he started decided he wanted to do photography, he decided, I want to study under that guy. And he drove him crazy for how long. He finally ended up just showing up at his door and said, you're going to work with me whether or not you want to or not. He was so persistent that it ended up working out for him that he got to study under the master that he wanted to study under. Well, this doesn't just apply. This applies to life. And I wanted to use a story. I, I was in, back in 96, I was ranked number five in the world in amateur disc golf. In 94, halfway through the year, I picked up a disc for the first time ever. Now, the thing is, as soon as I started getting into disc golf, I really liked it. I saw this guy on the course, he was standing there and he threw a disc farther than I'd ever seen anybody throw a disc before. It was so far, it went out of the back of the, the course. And I was like, I will never be able to throw that far, but I want to be able to spend some time with that guy. And so I made a point of showing up, finding out when he was going to be there, and I started being around so that we eventually started playing together. He was a top pro in the area. And as we started playing, he'd give me pointers. I'd start to see what he did. And I, I invested my time into learning what he did. And in a short amount of time, he elevated my game farther than I would have been able to elevate it by myself. And he was so instrumental in me getting to the point where I was throwing as far as he was because he taught me. And it was like my, my when I saw it at first, I was like, I will never get there. After spending time with him, I got up there and then I went off on my own and did, did my own thing because he opened up the door for that. I used to also teach prof tennis professionally, and I always tell somebody who wants to get better playing tennis, go play against people that are better than you. We always want to gravitate to play with the people that are our same level. You always want to play with somebody who can kick your butt because it's going to make you play harder and better, and you're going to get better faster. Mm -hmm. And we need to do that in photography as well. Mm -hmm. You absolutely need to do that. I think that's a good thing. But how do we do that? How do we work with that? So, actually, why don't we just go through, because I think that this would be something that would be really important. Who do we find, just as, as in, because I've asked on the chat, <coughs> I've asked who are the people that you guys have talked to about? You know, who do you find inspiring as a photographer? Who, who would be the people that you think that you would say? Me? Would be your Let me go back folks. to my other browser here. Um, I've got, of course, I'm gonna start off with Joe. Uh, am I still connected here to the AirPlay thing? I believe you are. Okay. I believe it's, you are. It's going really slow. Sorry. Um, so, I mean, of course, I even long before I worked with him, I I always found Joe McNally's work very inspiring. This picture in particular, <clears throat> I I was always inspired by this because as you're learning photography and you're learning more and more about light and the different things you can do with it, like this to me was just crazy because he did this, you know, in camera and did two two lights and just like just being this made me very curious about light this is one of many pictures that did but this just made me curious about all the different tricks and stuff you can do with light and then uh you go look kind of at newer work of joe's like this shot this is actually rc's wife jen for and he did this for a kelby training class yeah so you go and look at stuff like this this is 
crazy inspiring and just the, not only the use of light, but the use of color, you know, just knowing that, okay, well, this is, you know, having the scarf that's, or whatever the, the scarf thing that's blue and her dress that's kind of more red, you know, all the complimentary colors and everything. And then you go, well, I wonder who Joe's inspiration was. Well, then you go and you look at people like, as you already mentioned, Jean Mealy. You go and look at, if I can pull this back up here, this shot that Jean Mealy did back in like the, what, 50s, 60s? Mm -hmm. And this is Joe's inspiration for doing the stuff that he's doing today. So not only do we need to go and find current photographers that, that inspire us, like Joe, like Jeremy Cowart, but we need to find out, well, who inspires them? Or who did inspire them, and you go back, and the further back you keep digging, you know, then you get to the, like the the OGs, right. the original gangsters. But, <laughs> but Brad, you're just you're just saying that because you could just call Jean Mealy and just he'll come and take your conversation. Totally. Wait, no. You, you can't. No, I, I can't call Jean Mealy. Why? Because he's dead. Oh, he's dead. That's right. But, but that. yeah, so he, he's cool. for the win. Um, and one of my other, this is probably my all-time favorite picture is this one right here. <laughs> Sorry. And this is another, another old-school photographer, Philippe Paulsman, that worked a lot with Salvador Dali. Mm -hmm. And just the, the craziness of this picture. There's, I mean, really, what, is there anything special about the light here? Mm -mm. But you got cats flying. You got this random chair on the side. You got water splashing. He's jumping. His easel's up in the air. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a crazy, inspiring picture to me. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the kind of stuff that I like, mm -hmm. you know, light, color, moment. Gee, I wonder where people get that from. Oh, imagine that, dude! Imagine that. All right. <laughs> so, in terms of inspiration, Pete, uh, who would you find to be insp inspiring photographers, and and why do you find them to be inspiring? Okay. Well, I, I pulled three to kind of give uh, kind of a walk through the history of my photography, and the first one is going to be, you go back to the granddaddy of of photography as far as the. Uh, street photographer and other things. It's And this image in particular, it's uh, uh, Henri Brasson, Henri Brasson. And, and it's all about, he did a book all about the defining moment. And when you look at a picture like this, when I saw it, I went, I want to capture images like this. There's something so sublime about this and the way the foot is just about to hit the water. If this picture was taken any other time, it would have been not as, as impactful as this. And, and so it really said, okay, there's something about being at the right moment that's going to make a big difference. And so a lot of his pictures are like that. Before, oh. you, before you move off that, did, did you ever notice the poster in the background? Yeah, the, rail the mirrors. The, huh? Did you ever notice the, the poster in the background that mirrors the gesture of the guy? Yep. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just phenomenal. There's, there's so many things to it, and it's just amazing. Well, then when I saw in, in, in art school, I saw Mutter's work and the different things he did in camera to create these surrealistic images, I was blown away. I said, there's something beyond just taking a quick picture of something. It's about creating something even greater. And I started looking at his work, and I was just blown away. I literally was, my, my jaw dropped when I saw this stuff and said, you can do that with a camera? And, and then I would think in a more modern day, when I shoot weddings or whatever, I had the privilege of going to uh, uh, a, a class and listening to Joe Busink. And he does some absolutely phenomenal wedding uh, photography. And Joe Busink is nuts. And, nice. and, and it comes down to this kind of merges it all together. He gets those moments during a wedding that will just break your heart. They're, they're pivotal moments. And it's an image like this that I go, I would love to be able to capture an image like this. There's so much in that image that blows me away. I want to strive after shots like that. And that's what our, our masters both in the past and now in the present should do is say, I want to do something like that because it's phenomenal. It just opened up the door to a whole new world of what I want to try to achieve. All right, just a couple of other people that I thought were really interesting uh, that, he, that I've seen over here in the chat. Alan Hess is in the chat, and he talked about in terms of concert photographers, you've got Baron, uh, Baron Woolman and the inimitable Je, uh, Jim Marshall. Oh yeah. Just Marshall. phenomenal work. Actually, we were just taking a look at uh, books from- Jim Marshall, his proof book. His proof book. Yeah. So I thought that that was kind of neat. Um, Let's see. Uh, other people that people are talking about here. People said Moose Peterson. Yeah. They find him to be a very inspiring person. Absolutely. Abs uh, Moose, Moose is a phenomenal landscape photographer. Moose inspires me and by Art Man. 
So I think that that's pretty good. Uh, let's see who else. Scott King. Somebody said Clyde Butcher. Clyde Butcher has got some great photography, great landscape photography. He's 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 another phenomenally inspiring person. The people that the people that I would find inspiring. There's three people that I find inspiring. Uh, there's the, more than three, but these yeah, are, there's more these, than these, three. These are the top. My top my top <laughs> three current photographers. Like these are the people that that I would see would be uh, obviously Joe McNally, would be tops on my list right with, with that it's one of the things that i like about we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit we're going to take another break real quick but we'll talk about why in a second but mcnally's probably one of my biggest inspirations um heisler is, is one of my one of my most gregory heisler if you haven't seen gregory heisler's work it's it's just absolutely amazing just absolutely stunning simple work that he does um and so let's just take a look at a couple more pictures that he has here. You know, I love that picture of Dean Kamen. I think that it's just such a phenomenally thought out shot. Um, so I find him to be incredibly inspiring. And in, in fact, uh, just I'm going to jump off script here again. <laughs> if you haven't seen this already, go to Amazon.com, right? At Amazon.com. Just type in here, Gregory Heisler. He's got a brand new book out called 50 Portraits. If you want to see something really awesome, go take a look at that. I think Phenomenal. he actually has more covers of Time Magazine than anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Phenomenal. And then the last the last person that I would find inspiring is Jay Maisel. This, these are people that, that just embody amazing, amazing work. And for each... Each of them have a very specific reason as to why they, you know, why they're very inspiring to me. But those would be three starts. So we have Jean Mali, we've got Joe McNally, we've got Jay Mizell, we've got Greery Heisler, uh, we've got Mutter. Now, here's another great place that I would go to. Go to Google, right? And type in at right at the Google website. If you want to see something really, really good, I would type in two things. I would type in life photographers. Yeah. And then right here, you're gonna get one section of life.com and it's going to give you a listing of photographers if you want to see some amazing photographers just go down the list on the left that and list you'll... will include Jean Mealy and Philippe Paulsman and yep Who there's else? Bresson right so you have Margaret Burke White oh yeah right probably that picture that I did of the picture that I did of the gargoyle I did a picture on um, basically it was a gargoyle over at the Chrysler building was largely inspired by Margaret Burke White being up there, mm -hmm. hanging out and doing that. And we'll pull that up after a break. So this is another place for you to be able to take a look at this stuff. Uh, I'll give you guys another resource that, that I would use is go to Google, go back to Google, and look for something called Magnum Photographers, right? The Magnum Collective is magnumphotos.com. Inside of here, these are photographers that are part of this photo collective called Magnum. Amazing, amazing photographers like Robert Kappa was in it. Uh, Brisson, one, Brisson was there. This is a great place for you to find a lot of inspiration. A lot of those people of yesteryear. So the life photography place, the Magnum place is something that's really, really good. Now, at one point or another, you, you do want to kind of just see more current stuff, things that are happening. So the other really, really good place for you to kind of see you know, more current, more topical, more interesting things that are happening is to go right here to 500px, right? At 500px, you can really go through and find a lot of different mm -hmm. work that can kind of make you go, all right, well, yes, I don't live where Hyatt Lane is, but let's take a look at what is about Hyatt Lane that, that I like. You know, what do I find? You know, what, what's interesting about it? What's good about the composition? What's good about this? What's good about that? You know what I love about going to 500px is this. The camera, a Nikon D5100, right? Before we go out. That's not an expensive camera. How many times do, do people go, oh, well, you know, if I just had the, or if I just had the, if I just had this, if I just had this camera, excuses. if I just, yeah, excuses. Yeah, it just they're just all excuses. Um, you go out and you take a look at this, and 5D Mark III. All right, well, that is a little expensive. Well, I, I think I think the great thing is that uh, Click Tahoe talked about 
once you find an image that blows you away, like in the masters or in these, then start to research it, start to study it, meditate on it. Why does it capture your attention? And start following that. Mm -hmm. Go, okay, I really love what this guy does. What is he doing? Oh, 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 oh. before oh. we do that stuff, let's do this. Let's take a quick yeah. break. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit about that because that's what I want to do. I wanted to ask you guys because it's not enough for us to turn around and go, this Go follow these people. Go stand in front of the Life website and just be bombarded by all of these pictures. But why would you do that? Right. And what are you going to get out of that? That's what we'll talk about when we come back. Hello, I'm Bill Fortney, and welcome to Olympic National Park. Olympic National Park is made up of a number of different landforms all the way from a beautiful sea coast to high mountains, glacial snow, the wonderful whole rainforest and the rest of these old growth forests. And it all leads to great nature photography. And we're here to learn landscape photography and the techniques of landscape photography, but we're gonna do a lot more than just landscape. We're gonna do close-ups, we're gonna do water photography, we're gonna do high altitude sunrise and sunset work. We have a lot to do. So please come check out my class in Olympic National Park only on kelbytraining.com. Welcome back everybody to The Grid RC here. We've got Pete, we've got Brad Moore. We've got a couple, ow, ow, knock it off. <laughs> now, uh, Click Tahoe had written a couple of different things. I wanted to give you guys just a couple of different names. Now guys, if you're having a hard time kind of following all the all the names that we're that we're giving you guys for inspiration, don't worry about it. When we re-air this, or if you're watching this on Kelby TV or YouTube or all that stuff, we will make it a point to go out and just put all of the link all of the links to all of these people so that you guys will have them in one stop shop. Don't worry about it. We'll get you guys covered. But other people that said somebody said click Tahoe said Zach Arias gives me hope. See? I, I would put Zach Harris. I did. So, Zach is a I very saw inspiring. Lindsay Adler in there. I Lindsay saw Adler. Black. You know, Dave Black. Now, here's here's a full disclosure that's going to turn into an advertising. All of these people that we're talking about: Lindsay Adler, <laughs> Zach Arias, Joe McNally, not Jean Mili, not Jean Mili, not unless you're pulling out a Ouija board. <laughs> um, Jay Mazel, not sorry. Ouija either. A Ouija board. <laughs> um, all of these people are found over at Kelby Training, guys. I am unabashed in telling people, look, if you want to learn from all of these guys right now, go over to KelbyTraining.com. Go over here, right? Type in. Do you know how to use a computer? Yes, I do know how to use a computer. If only there were somebody that could teach you how to use these oh, things. Oh, shut it. <laughs> go to KelbyTraining.com. Take a look at the instructor. We have some of the world's best photographers teaching you there. Alan Hess is on there. Day. Alan Hess is on there. We try Jack not to Davis, let too Jack. many people know that. Jay Alan. Mazel is there. Jay Mazel's class is Jeremy Cowart. Yeah. Jeremy Cowart is probably one of the most inspiring people that's out there, one of the most inspiring artists that's out there. You know, you've got Joel Grimes yep. doing so, a lot of different so work. Somebody mentioned him, too. John Paul, somebody said John Paul Caponegro. John oh, Paul yeah. Caponegro is a phenomenally inspiring person, right? Yep. So there's a lot of different people that are here. Take a look at these guys. Go to KelbyTraining.com. You're going to find some stuff there. Well, I think one of the reasons why they are there is because Scott wants to be inspired. Scott mm -hmm. goes out and finds people that he wants to learn from, that he is inspired by, and says, hey, we need to bring them in. That's, mm -hmm. why, that's why people like Tim Wallace and Peter Hurley and Will Joe and mm -hmm. all sorts of people that are there. That Frank Dorhoff. These are people that inspire Most. Scott. Yeah. And so Scott asked them to come teach. <laughs> you don't need to know them. You just need to log into KelbyTraining.com. Yeah. Yep. Right? And you've got everything that you want there. But here's the thing. So we've talked a little bit about that. So we've talked about why it's important. We've talked a little bit about the fact that you need to kind of broaden it and you need to try cumin and you need to try saffron to kind of expand your worldview. And that, that will make your pictures a lot better just by going out and analyzing other different things, doing that that art history lesson that you probably didn't do because you probably didn't go to art school to do photography or you didn't go to photography school. Here's the thing, not a lot of people go to photography school anymore. You don't have to. That's one of the things that I'm excited about in photography. You can do this by yourself. You can do this on the internet. You can do this without anybody there with you. You can experience all of this stuff right on the internet. So now that you have all of that stuff and you understand that looking back often in times, I always tell people back in time, will help what you're gonna do in the future. You also now have a list of things to do. 
right? You have a list of photographers. You can go and take a look at all of these websites and go click, 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 and see what's there. What happens a lot of the times is when people have this conversation, people will turn around and go, all right, well, you're telling me that in order for in order for you to get better, you need to look at different things. And if you need to take a look at different things, you need to see all of these different pictures. So they go and they stand in front of the museum and they go, all right, I have a hundred pictures in front of me. All of them hit me. I don't feel any smarter. I don't feel any better. So I figured that what we would do is we'd spend some time going through each of the individual photographers that we like and talking about what it is that we find inspiring about them. That way it can kind of show you guys a roadmap about what you should do when you stand in front of a picture and you go, I like this picture. How does it speak to me? So we'll go ahead and we'll start with you, Mr. Bradmore. Um, I kind of already did this a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, you did it. You through. did it a little bit. Let's go back and just but, talk a little bit about it. Yeah. So like, you know, I showed this picture of Steve Martin that Joe had done. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's just, the, the thing that inspired me was look at what you can do when you know how to use light properly. Mm -hmm. You know, this isn't, there, there's nothing, it's just a, a, basically a regular light softbox off to the side on either side of him. And he's turning one way flash, turning the other way flash. But to me as a college student, not knowing that much about light, just realizing, oh my gosh, you can do this stuff in camera and get some cool results. That was, that was amazing to me. Um, you know what I like about that picture? Also, just let me yeah. just hijack that for a second sure. there. Is one of the things that, that, and I'll just knock it out now because I'm going to do Joe McNally as well. But one of the things that I like about McNally's work is that McNally lights so that it doesn't appear lit. Right. So that's always been one of the most inspiring things to me. When you look at a lot of his work, you're going through it and it doesn't look, it doesn't look overly lit. Yeah. So the lighting takes a back seat to what's happening with most of that stuff. He, he lights so that the concept, so that the the message of the picture stands out. And the message of this was, you know, he had kind of heard about, you know, Steve Martin as a person off camera is not necessarily the most outgoing, extroverted person. He's more of an introvert, kind of keeps to himself. Mm -hmm. And then whenever he gets on stage in front of camera, you know, he comes alive. Mm -hmm. And so that's in this picture showing kind of both sides of stage personality versus real life personality. And it plays tribute to actually the comic masks, yeah. the little tragedy, yeah, exactly. the, the art masks. Exactly. So it's like the levels at which that stuff is thought of and it's very, very simply put, I think is a really, really nice thing. Yeah. So that that's cool. And then this one from Jean-Mille, the, the stroboscopic ballerina, I, I still don't really understand how, how this all works, and it just still blows my mind that this is possible to do in camera. So, mm -hmm. um, and this one actually, I love if you if you go on Wikipedia, you can actually find the original version of this picture from Philippe Hausman. And in the original version, you can still see the strings that are holding the stuff up so that it's not sitting on the floor. There's actually not a painting in the easel behind him. There's some, you can see the, the hand that's holding the chair. Um, there was something in the bottom left corner that got retouched out. And that just makes me go, this is all like pre-Photoshop. So they were doing this stuff in the dark room, putting these things in after the fact, getting rid of the strings, you know, and it just makes me kind of Whenever I was in school, we're, it was a very strong photojournalism program, and you know it's all about the ethics of photography, and you know you don't retouch anything. You don't you don't do much in the way of retouching as far as like removing things goes, and so it just makes me want to go, oh yeah, really? Look at look at what Philippe did. So whatever. Yeah, <laughs> I guess I think I think it's I think it's wild. I think it's absolutely wild. Now. Mr. Collins. Well, what's funny is I see you over there looking at this. I have a couple, but if we go to my Oh, let's, I'm going to start with this one right here. Yeah, you can jump back over. In, in art school, all of a sudden, I came into understanding that there was this whole other photographic technique called photograms that uh, Man Ray is really known for, rayographs, where they take actual objects and lay them on the photographic paper. And that was inspiring to me, along with double exposure, thinking of ways to really take the medium, medium that you have and expand upon it and do things that aren't normal to do it. It really kind of built in a lot of the whole idea of what I wanted to do with Photoshop later on. But then also, uh, when we get over, I'm gonna sneak over in, into uh, RCs for a minute. 
I love Jay Mazel and uh, just being able to see some of his work. But this is one of the images that really stands out to me because it is such a, a moment that I would have missed. Almost every time I would have walked right by here, but he caught it at the exact moment when that light comes through those chairs. He saw something that probably nobody else did. And that's what inspires me to have my eyes open to be looking for the sublime. Once again, like Brissant, having my eyes ready to capture the sublime. And, and that's what inspires me. I look at their stuff and go, I bet you nobody else saw that. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm going to bring up one. I want to bring up uh, something here that I think is absolutely important. Now, we were talking about school and education and things like that. There are a lot of the times you can kind of get your studies and you can do all of this kind of stuff and not necessarily worry about uh, going into school. However, if you are an academic and you do want to take your stuff bona fide into school, there's no better place to take a look right here. Go to the School of Visual Arts in New York City. Katrine Eisman chairs this, this, this department dealing with digital photographic arts. Go to sva.edu. If I had the time and money to do this, this would be the place where I would go to get a master's. It's just a phenomenal, phenomenal work. But I had to think about that and I'd make sure that I, post, I posted that. Going back to Joe McNally. So we talked about the entire concept about it being lit so that it doesn't feel like it's lit, right? It's not garish. It doesn't have a lot of really harsh light. The execution of the light kind of lets you just kind of focus on the moment. But there is a lot of moment. There is a lot of gesture that happens inside of that stuff. That's one of the things that I think that as a person who does burning your written as HDR, I think that it's, it's funny that I would find all of this stuff inspiring by watching somebody who just lights from, you know, from behind walls. Like you don't barely see any of that kind of stuff. So I, I find his work to be massively inspiring. Um, Heisler, Gregory Heisler. One of the things that I think that's, that's great about Heisler is that he is the epitome of reducing everything. You think about it, right? When you take a look at logo design, graphic designers make logos. When you make a logo, what you do is you take a concept, you take an idea, you take a company model, you take all of these values of a company and you throw them inside of a pot and you reduce it and reduce it and reduce it and reduce it until you get it to the smallest possible component that represents everything. So the FedEx logo kind of represents all of this stuff. The Nike swoosh represents all of this kind of stuff. And I think that it's really interesting when it's done very, very well. When you do that in photography, there was a guy named Arnold Newman who used to do this stuff where he would take the concept of making a picture, of making a portrait, and he would just reduce it, reduce it, reduce it, reduce it to a point where there is, it, there's no light. It's not about light. It's not about gestures. It's not about any of that stuff. I mean, it really is slow cooked to a point where the essence of the picture is left. If you take a look at this picture, uh, Newman's uh, Stravinsky, Newman's, uh, uh, this thing, Arnold Newman's picture of Stravinsky at the piano, this was the picture that got me into wanting to be a photographer. You know, and it could not be any more reduced. This is a pianist talking about, you know, just a portrait. I mean, no one would have ever thought about this kind of stuff. The, the use of the space, the use of the color, the use of the piano to be able to make this kind of note. He is the smallest part of that picture. To be able to do that kind of stuff, I think is just absolutely amazing, right? And one of Newman's first, <laughs> one of Newman's first assistants was Gregory Heisler. So in this picture with Dean Kamen, right? Dean Kamen was the guy that, uh, he's from DECA Research. And they've produced like insulin pumps. They've produced a whole bunch of different types of things. But one of the most controversial things that he produced was the Segway. And in the middle of all of this walking and bikes, to be able to kind of get Dean just kind of just edging out ahead in the middle of all of that mess, I just thought it was a phenomenal execution of a portrait. So I'm a really, really big fan of him. The last person is Jay Maisel. So Jay Maisel's ability to be able to see something happening, you know, really just a far of a distance and to be able to see the relationship of all of the different things inside of a picture, that, that requires a lot. Sometimes a lot of the times we're like, waterfall, you're looking at the waterfall, wow, man, it's going to be a great waterfall, you're going to be a great waterfall, and you don't notice the 14,000 different elements that are around you. To be able to see everything inside of one frame and go, this will make sense because of this, this will make sense because of this, and synthesize it in a split second, I think that kind of stuff is really, really important. So I'm going to leave you guys with probably one more. This isn't this isn't a 
this isn't a person, it's actually a documentary. If you guys wanna see something really, really cool, go to YouTube, and at YouTube, just type this in. Type in Brisson, just, they probably lost, just plain love. So here you'll see that there's a section, and there, there is John, just plain love, Henry Cartier Brisson. All right. It'll be usually the top thing. It's over an hour and 10 minutes long, and it's an interview that's subtitled with Brisson that talks about pictures and his work and all of that kind of stuff. It'll give you a lot of inspiration for you to work with most of this stuff. So those are the kinds of things that we're looking for. Those are the kinds of things that we're looking for. When we stand in front of that picture, we go, why do I like this? It's simple. It's this. The elements work with this kind of stuff. And you write all that stuff down, and all of that information can hopefully take you and put you into that next level. Well, and I'd say, just like when <clears throat> I did with disc golf, I didn't just look at the other guy throwing the disc and go, okay, suddenly I'm better. I then walked away from him and threw hundreds of thousands of discs trying to imitate that and learn what it took to throw. The visual library should be what inspires you to go out and try it. Mm -hmm so that you learn. Because the true difference between a professional and an amateur is a professional has a visual library and the experience to lean on to get the shot he wants to get. Cool. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, hey, listen, we have a contest that we need to be able to do. We're going to give away a good, a good starter kit by having the moment it clicks. This is what you're going to do. You're going to go to kelbytv.com. And you're gonna to go to kelbytv.com slash contest. You're gonna click on the drop down and you're gonna select the grid. You're gonna give your name, you're gonna give your email, you're gonna give your website. We'd love to see your work. Make sure that you do that. Go to the Kelby TV site, leave a comment. Tell us what you like, tell us what you don't like, tell us what you'd like to see. We'd love to be able to hear from you. One of you guys is gonna win these two books as well as the strap. Sun from Sniper. Sun Sniper. So, uh, thanks. Brad for coming in. I wanted to make sure that I had Brad because Brad had a very, very different take on it when he, you know, from coming from an academic background, I think that you can represent a lot very, very well there. So thanks. thank you very thanks much for coming by. Well, I think it's interesting. He came from a, a photography art background. I came from Actually, a, I didn't. Okay, well, never mind. <laughs> that blows it out of the water. I was going to say, I came from an art, art background, and mm -hmm. I got into photography right at the tail end. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn a lot of these guys coming through here and I love working here because I keep finding new people that inspire me because it's like oh I didn't know about him I didn't know about him mm -hmm. and so that's how it should be for all of us is every day we have an opportunity to be inspired more and more by other folks yeah. and like just kind of go to go off that in the misconception uh, I I studied these things in school because I wanted to not because I not because it was part of my curriculum that I was going through um, and that's that's how I found out about all these old photographers that, you know, some of them were presented in class, sure, but I never had a, like a ph photography art history class. Yeah. It was just kind of along the way I picked up. You just them. did it because you like doing right. it. Right. So make your own way. And Give your own. Yeah. complain. Oh, you have, yeah. Right. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, so, and, and Pete, thank you very much for coming up with the idea. I thought it was something that. We don't necessarily talk about a lot of the times the top ten list or the you know these kinds of things. We don't get a chance to kind of talk a little bit, you know, more esoteric. So yep. thank you very much for coming up with it. Hey, real quick, you're yes, gonna, you're going to be in New York this week. Are yes, you, you going to be swinging by B and H? I may be swinging by B and H. Of course, <laughs> B and H is the place where everybody goes to get your stuff. So if you're in New York, if you're online, make sure you go to bnhphoto.com. That's the place for you to go. Uh, thanks to all of you guys. Thanks for coming by. Thanks uh, for standing with us for just over an hour. And hopefully, Matt and Scott will be back here next week right here on The Grid. I'll see you guys soon. Take care. This week's episode of The Grid is sponsored by Impix. Shoot today, upload tonight, we ship tomorrow. On one software, focused on photography. Peach Pit Press, publishers of technology books, ebooks, and videos for creative people. Epson, exceed your vision. Expo Imaging, rogue flash vendors for speedlight enthusiasts. Intel, the power you need for hardcore creatives. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional photography website. And B&H Photo, the professional source.